Hello Catherine from Double Kini here. Welcome to our journey together to a better kini health. In today's video, I want to show you the best alternative to salt I've ever tried. Adding this to your meals won't just make them taste better. It will actually help your kidneys improve. And when I talk about helping your kidneys improve, I don't say it lightly. I've been working with people with kidney problems for eight years and I've met patients who were able to improve their kidney health even when doctors told them that it wasn't possible. A very important lesson is that the renal diet has to be reasonable since you have to commit to it for a long time. And what you can see here is the quantity of salt you need in a whole day. Yes, you don't need a single grain more than this. Is that enough to make your meals enjoyable? Or should we find a better alternative? Because a diet that works, a diet that is sustainable is exactly what people should follow to beat kidney disease. So never give up on your kidneys and never give up on your efforts to make your meals both healthy and tasty. What I'm going to show you in this video is exactly how to achieve this. Actually, I've been using this salt alternative in my recipes for a while now and let's just say that it changed my way of cooking. Now, many people ask me, are all these restrictions really worth it? I want to answer this question with a comment I received the other day from one of you guys. I was diagnosed with diabetic kidney disease years ago and my creatinine levels went only up since then. I was really scared at the point I decided to change my life. I started to watch YouTube videos to learn more about my problem. I'm reading all that I can. I'm even taking seminars. My creatinine was well over 2 headed towards 3 before I started taking action. It is now 1.57. My RBC went up to 13 points. Still high but certainly headed in the right direction. I've been eating zero as in zip, zilk, salt, sugar, meat, and deep fried foods. I've also started exercising every day, first thing in the morning. Today, even my doctor insists that I maintain this regime. Oh, this is really amazing! Thank you very much for sharing your inspiring story and most sincere congratulations for what you have achieved. And guys, if you know anyone suffering from chronic kidney disease, please share this video with them. This is a message of hope that deserves to be heard. Also, I want to point out that salt is becoming a real issue in today's society. According to the World Health Organization, 2.5 million lives could be saved every year just by reducing salt intake to less than 5 grams per day. Now, let this number sink in for a moment. 2.5 million people is the size of a large city and many of these deaths are caused by kidney disease. Now, if these people were killed by a foreign state instead of salt, there will be a global war going on right now. But it's salt, so it's okay. And to make things worse, the food industry is promoting various types of salt as healthy. Yes, you wouldn't believe it. Every time I go grocery shopping, I find a new type of salt with supposed health benefits. There's iodized salt to improve memory and concentration. There's smoked salt, which is more natural. There's kosher salt that keeps the body hydrated. But there's also flake salt, sea salt, black salt, smoked salt. Looks like every day they came up with a new type of salt and every single one of them is supposed to have health benefits. Himalayan salt in particular is what many people consider the healthier one. Folks have made many health claims regarding Himalayan salt over the years. Some say salt lumps help purify the air, some say it can detoxify the body of heavy minerals. Some have even suggested it can increase libido. There's even ads out there promoting Himalayan salt as a better alternative for people on a low sodium diet. But is this true? 
Are Himalayan salt and other types of salt healthier than regular table salt? Look, it's very important to take all these marketing claims about specialty salts with a grain of salt. I want to say this as clearly as possible. All salt is salt. Research has never demonstrated that Himalayan salt or other types of salt have any unique health benefits compared to other dietary salt. It may make food taste better, but it's also never gonna be healthy for your kidneys. There is no real benefit in using Himalayan salt over sea salt or iodized salt or whatever. The mineral impurities that give Himalayan salt a pink color often promote as healthful are far too low in concentration to be nutritionally beneficial. You would have to eat a little amount of sodium to achieve helpful quantities of the other minerals. And this is true for all these healthier types of salt. They are all really bad for your kidneys. So the bottom line here is don't get fooled by advertisement and don't let them convince you that salt is healthy. Now, when I talk about the low sodium diet in my videos, people always ask me, is it safe to consume so little sodium in the diet? Will an I risk becoming too low on sodium? It's a proven scientific fact that the human body needs only a small amount of sodium, less than 500 milligrams per day, to function properly. This you see here is the quantity of sodium that is actually necessary to maintain proper fluid balance and other essential processes of the body. That's just a few grains of table salt, the amount in less than one fourth teaspoon. And believe me, if I say that's almost impossible to eat less sodium than this in a day, if you eat anything at all. For example, if you eat three slices of bread in a day, you have already eaten more than 500 grams of sodium. And as we have seen, most people eat more than 10 times this amount of salt every day, some even 40 or 50 times this amount of salt. So obviously, sodium itself is not unhealthy. The dose makes the poison. So question. How much sodium should you consume every day? There is a reason why people on a renal diet should limit sodium intake to no more than 1500 milligrams per day. And that's about two third teaspoon of salt, by the way. Excess sodium in the blood is flushed away by the kidneys. So when they aren't working at 100%, it is even more important to keep sodium intake under control. Time to get rid of all the salt shaker then? Well, that may not be enough because while the media and advertisement want you to think that the salt shaker is the culprit, that's almost never the truth. Do you want to know who the real culprit is? Junk foods, takeaway meals, restaurant foods and processed foods in general are the main culprit here. So keep in mind that most of the sodium in your diet comes from processed and restaurant foods. I'll show you an example. If you eat a McDonald's, a single Big Mac meal is going to give you 1580 milligrams of sodium. This is from their website. Now, tell me, how can you keep under 1500 milligrams of sodium in a day when you have gotten 1580 milligrams in a single meal? Anyways, I don't think any of you guys eat at McDonald's, but if you do, that's probably the reason why you're struggling to keep blood pressure under control. And no, I'm not joking. And don't think other fast food chains or restaurants are better. So if you care about your kidneys, Avoid junk food and table salt too. Now the big question. How can you make your meals taste good without any salt? Well, this is frankly amazing and I can't believe I've never talked about this before. This is a very tasty salt alternative. I've been using it in my recipes for a while. I really love this. 
it changed my way of cooking. It does not contain any sodium nor potassium. It's just made from spices. It really makes you forget about salt if you use this spice up to grill bell peppers or zucchini, for example. This one is specifically made to make veggies more tasty and it's made from garlic, black pepper, thyme, hot pepper, coriander, basil, and some more spices. Now, the very interesting part. While the health benefits of Himalayan salt, sea salt, or smoked salt are all made up, spices have real, tangible kidney health benefits. Black pepper, for example, is full of antioxidants. Hot pepper can work as a natural painkiller. Thyme can boost your immunity. And garlic can significantly lower your blood pressure. So you don't even need to use this to replace salt to get health benefits. You just need to add to your cooking a seasoning made from spices. By the way, this should be very easy to find in the spice section of your supermarket or online. And obviously, you can make your own. And this one is definitely one of my favorites. But maybe you have different tastes, so no need to go looking for this particular one. You can find different types of pre-mixed spicy seasonings to go, for example, with broths, salads, sandwiches. Just double check the label of what you're buying to make sure there is no sodium in it, obviously. And also no potassium. Some brands use potassium chloride to replace salt. That won't be safe for people with kidney problems who need to limit their potassium intake. For example, no salt brand salt alternative is full of potassium. Mrs. Dash combo seasoning, on the other hand, is just spices, perfectly safe and healthy. Flavor made is good too. Tony Cashier's no salt seasoning is another great option. And obviously, you can make your own using regular spices and finding your own perfect blend. If you want to know more about the top spices with kidney health benefits, in this video up here, I have even eaten a whole jalapeno. Not to mention that I will also talk about the best spices to make your meals tastier and your kidneys healthier. Okay guys, a new video is coming next Friday. I hope to see you there. In the meantime, keep taking good care of your kidneys and be good to yourself. This is all for today. Thank you for watching.